Well, good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Today, we are in part five of our series on covenant versus replacement theology. And as always, I pray you have been enjoying this series so far. I hope this material is not too dry for you. It's deep stuff. It's a very important topic, so I, I pray that you're taking notes and that you're learning something out of this topic so far. Remember, you can always visit us at mymdi.org. Write us and let us know what you've learned. We love to hear from our listeners. Yesterday, we continued our study of God's covenants with the Abrahamic covenant. Today, we want to continue our study into the next covenant given by God with the Mosaic covenant. Now, remember, these covenants build one upon another. They do not replace the one that preceded it. And you can always go back and refer to these episodes one by one. You can pause, take notes to further your understanding of this very important topic. So let's begin. Let's, let's go back and we'll, we'll just look at the Abrahamic covenant real quick. This is where we left off yesterday. Remember I said this covenant is both conditional and unconditional. Conditional on God, but unconditional on Abraham. But each had a part to play. But ultimately, God will keep his promise to give Abraham a family who will inherit the land and will be a blessing to the world. Later on in the history of Israel, we come to the Mosaic Covenant. Now remember during that cutting of the pieces ceremony between God and Abraham in Genesis 15, verses 12 and 14, where God proclaims, now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs, and will serve them, and they will afflict them four hundred years. And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. And afterward, they shall come out with great possessions. And that happened. So the Abrahamic covenant continued from Abraham to Isaac and then to Jacob, who had 12 sons. A great famine came upon the land and forced everyone down to Egypt. Remember, they sold Joseph into slavery, but God did that to prepare a place for them to come. Remember, Joseph interpreted the dreams of the Pharaoh, and Pharaoh made him second in command. And the dream was about that there was going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And Pharaoh put Joseph in charge to prepare for those seven years of famine. And when that famine came, uh, Jacob heard that there was land or, or food in Egypt, grain in Egypt. And he sent his sons down. And eventually they all came down to dwell in Egypt until God raised up Moses at the appointed time, which was 400 years later, to return to the land of Canaan, the promised land. You know, Yohei Vahev Adonai Elohim meets with the Israelites at Mount Sinai when they left and during the Exodus. You know, you know the story. The giving of the Ten Commandments. They leave Egypt with a high hand with great possessions, just as God told Abraham. And God meets with them at Mount Sinai in the wilderness and revisits the promises made to Abram to the people. Acting as the representative for Israel, Moses ascends the mountain to hear the terms of God's covenant with the people. God promises to make Israel into a holy kingdom of priests that will spread his blessing and glory to all of the nations. Remember, during this time now, the Israelites are several million members strong. And now they were going to become a holy kingdom of priests. This was God's plan for the ancient Israelites to become this holy nation and to spread God's commands, his Torah, 
throughout the whole world. God instructed Israel to obey all the laws given at Mount Sinai, promising to bring blessings if they followed his commands and curses if they ignored them. And you might want to write this down in your notes to just remember this, but go and read Deuteronomy 28. These are all detailed. These blessings and cursings are all detailed in Deuteronomy 28. And so you can go and you can read that for yourself. And as you know, they've inherited a lot of those blessings, but in time they failed and they were dispersed in chaos. And uh, here we are where we are right now because of not upholding uh, their, their side, their, the promises that God gave them that they would be blessings if they just obeyed his commands. And those same conditions apply to us today. We have great blessings if we keep God's Torah, his commands. They are not burdensome. They're not a yoke. They haven't been done away with. They haven't been nailed to the cross. Things have changed because all the commands, you know, there's some that apply to the priests or some that apply to the temple, some to women. But individually, the Ten Commandments are still in force. If we could just keep those ten, we would be doing much better in the world than what we're doing right now. And sadly, the Fourth Commandment seems to trip so many people up, but it hasn't been done away with. And so this is what this whole study is about. Has the commandments been done away with? Has the church replaced Israel? Has God's commandments been nailed to the cross? At the end of the study, you will have the answer to that. It may not be the answer that you're looking for, but you will have the answer as we go through these scriptures day by day. So bear with me and take notes, pray and study and meditate on what I'm sharing with you. This is not my doctrine. These are words of the living God that I am sharing with you. I'm just bringing them to light in an organized way to try to make understanding of them because so much has been lost over these thousands of years. So anyhow, read Deuteronomy 28. And go through those blessings and cursings by obeying or disobeying God's commands. So God says it shall come to pass. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, this is Moses writing this, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you, us, high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And I'll go through some of these blessings. It says, Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket, your food supply, and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. These are tremendous blessings and all God is asking for of us is to obey his commands. The commands in the instruction book that he has given to mankind so that we can live happy, fulfilling, blessed lives. But what does Satan do? He, he tickles your ears. He whispers in your ears. He provides temptations. And we sin. And we bring curses upon ourselves. When God just wants to bless us. But in the end, we have free will, and it's our choice whether we want to choose life or we want to choose death. God continues here in Moses' writing. He says, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. 
if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So how are we doing? How are you doing? Where are you right now with your walk with God? Are you keeping the commandments of the Lord? Or are you too busy on your phones playing TikTok and looking at Facebook and watching YouTube videos, which you should be watching this one, of course, uh, right? <laughs> but use your time wisely. Use your time to edify and to learn and to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord and in his word. He says, if you keep the commandments of the Lord, and, and the commandments are not, you know, Satan has put in our minds that the commandments are a burden, and they are not a burden. Commandments are simply instructions, right? When you buy a new car, do you read the instruction manual? You want to learn how all the gadgets work in your car? When you get your new phone, do you go and watch videos or learn how to operate your phone in the right way and all the little apps that are in it? Well, life has an instruction book on what we should eat, how we should worship, what days God has appointed for us to meet with him, how we should treat one another in our relationships, in our wives, and our husbands, and our children, how to settle disputes with our neighbors, and how to live happy, vibrant, fulfilling lives. They are in the instruction books. So let me put it this way. He says, if you keep the instructions of the Lord your God and you walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. And now these are the curses on disobedience. And the curses far outweigh the blessings because the Lord uses these curses and he intensifies them. He turns up the heat because he wants us to repent and in the end turn away from our sins. Repent, teshuvah, which means turn from your sin and return to the Lord. And that's when he turns up the heat. So let's go sue some of these curses. Just to give you a foretaste, you can go read Deuteronomy 28 and get the full picture. But he says, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in the country. Cursed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle. In the offspring of your flocks. Do we see that anywhere in the world today? Cursed shall you be when you come in. And cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send on you cursing. Confusion. And rebuke. In all that you set your hand to do. Nothing will succeed. Until you are destroyed. And until you perish quickly. Because of the wickedness of your doings. In which you have forsaken him. The Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess. The Lord will not neglect his covenant or his promises, but that doesn't mean that you individually will be a part of them. He will fulfill them. He will raise up stones if he has to, to fulfill his covenant. But if you forsake him, he has no reason not to bring these curses upon you. Moreover, all these courses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his instructions, his commandments, his statutes, which he commanded you. And they shall be upon you for a sign and a, one, a wonder. And on your descendants, now listen to this, on your descendants forever. The Lord is serious. You understand, my friends? The Lord is serious. You got to get in your mind right now that the Lord is the creator of heaven and earth. 
He is not our little genie that we rub our hands together and pray and he pops out of the bottle and grants our wishes. He is the eternal God without beginning or end. He created us. He created the earth. He created all that is in the earth. He demands our respect. And if we don't give it to him, he's going to slap us and destroy us and wipe us off the face of the earth. He has no use for you if you are not going to be, if you do not want to be a part of his family. He has called you. Remember the scriptures? Many are called, but many, but few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. So the purpose of these studies that we're going through, these daily Torah podcasts, and I really encourage you to go back and listen to that 41-part series I did on God's plan for humanity to know where your part is and then to choose to be part of that first resurrection because you don't want to be part of that second resurrection, that great white throne judgment where you are judged and he's going to separate the sheep from the goats and if you're not part of the plan, if you're not part of the program, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. And no one's going to save you. No one's going to pity you. It's going to be too late. So you got to do it now. Now is the time. Today is the day to get your life in order, to repent of your sins, your porn, your pornography, your stealing, anything in your life that is separating you from God, you need to turn it off, to get it out of your life, to pluck it up and remove it and get yourself back to God, to get yourself back to honoring Him, reading His Word, loving Him, loving your family, your friends, your neighbors, loving God and loving your neighbors. That's what it's all about. Where are you now? in your walk with God. Okay, forget about judging other people, forget about what other people are doing, and you can't blame anyone for where you are right now with your walk. Where are you right now between you and God? It's between you and God. And Yeshua is there as our advocate. And he will forgive you of your sins, but you have to repent. And if you haven't been baptized or immersed or rededicated yourself to God, you need to do so. Get with your minister, your rabbi, whoever that you look up to, and get your life back in order. Because you don't want to be part of what's coming. The tribulation, the great white throne judgment, and being cast in that lake of fire. You do not want to be there, my friends. God is asking right now for a little bit of your life, time span, to honor him and to serve him because he's got great plans for you for all of eternity. He wants you to be part of his family, of the kingdom of God. He has something great in store for you. You just have to trust him and dedicate yourself to him. Are you willing to do that? Forget about getting wealth and riches in this life, it will come in the kingdom. But he, he wants you to dedicate yourself to him right now. Otherwise, if we continue here in our study, you're going to be like the Israelites of old. That the Lord will scatter you among all peoples from one end of the earth to the other. And you will serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood, gods of wood and stone. And among those nations you shall find no rest, nor shall the sole of your foot have a resting place. But there the Lord will give you a trembling heart, failing eyes, and anguish of soul. You know, Israel's allegiance to Yahweh will be outwardly reflected in the way that they live keeping the commands, instructions, and most notably, observing the weekly Sabbath rest. And our allegiance to Adonai is also outwardly reflected in the way that we live 
and keep his commands. We're no different either from a national level or individual level because it is the individuals who make up the nation, right? So we have to be part of the program, part of the plan. Now, in Exodus 31, what does Adonai say to Moses? He says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign. Here's the sign of this covenant, the Mosaic covenant. Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and in you throughout your generations that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. And that's the spiritual death. You may not be put to physical death today for not keeping the Sabbath, but you will surely be put to spiritual death when you're cast into the lake of fire. For whoever does any work on the Sabbath, that person will be cut off from among his people, from among God's people. You understand this, my, brother, my friends. Therefore, the children of Israel, and if you are a believer in Messiah, then you have been grafted into the whole house of Israel. There is no Israel in the Gentiles. You may have been a Gentile at one time, but if you are a believer of Messiah and you have been baptized, immersed, and repentant of your sins, and you're, you have been grafted in to the whole house of Israel, and you are expected to keep his commands and his Shabbat. So there's not one command, set of commands for Israel and the Jewish people, and one set of commands for the Gentiles and the nations. There's one law, one baptism. One God, one commandment, one set of instructions for everyone. You understand that? You got to get that out of your head. The teachings that the churches have given us throughout the ages since 325 AD with Constantine, they are lies. I'm sorry to say this, brethren, but if you are not on the program, you've been lied to all your life. You have to understand. Read the scriptures. Don't take my word for it. I'm reading the scriptures right here. Exodus 31. He's saying, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. It's a perpetual covenant. Forever. Nothing has replaced it. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day he rested. And was refreshed. So that goes right back to Genesis, right? Before Adam and Eve, when he created everything, he created the Sabbath. It was his first act after creation. He created the Sabbath day rest. So why don't we observe it? He is God. We are just flesh and blood. Why do we argue with him? Why do we always want to go our own way? It's time to wake up, brethren. Time is short. It's time to honor the creator of heaven and earth. And when he made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone written with the finger of God. So here you have the Ten Commandments written with the finger of God. The fourth commandment that you shall keep the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. Has anyone have the right to go in and try to erase what God has written with his own finger? you got to be kidding me. It's the most absurd thing I've ever heard. Has a new set of commandments been chiseled in stone? No. These are in force forever. Why do you think he wrote them in stone with his own finger? 
what God has ordained man cannot erase or replace. Do you understand that, brethren? The Pope, the Church, no one has the authority to change or replace the commandments of God written with his own finger in tablets of stone. This Mosaic Covenant builds upon the other covenants. And it was conditional upon Israel keeping the commandments of God. But in no way results in the replacement of God's people. Only their punishment and our punishment for disobedience. And that's what you have to remember. God is going to keep his side of the bargain. He's going to keep the covenants, whether we do or the nation of Israel does or not. Like I said, he will raise up stones if he has to. Thankfully, he doesn't have to because many have committed to Yeshua, to the Torah, to keeping his covenants. The land of Israel is back. The people are back. And many, many people of Israel, as you're going to see unfold, are believers of Messiah and of Yeshua and are honoring Him and keeping the same days, the same holy days, the same Shabbats that Yeshua and the apostles kept when they walked upon this earth. Well, friends, I know I've gone long today. The Mosaic Covenant, very, very important covenant. I really wanted you to understand this covenant. Please go back and reread Deuteronomy 28, reread Exodus, understand what is going on here. Again, you can visit our website at mymdi.org. If you feel so led, please donate to us so that we can continue to get this word out. Share this with your friends and your family. They need to hear this word. So I pray that you will partner with us and be part of our, of our ministry here. And so we thank you. We give you blessings. We say shalom aleichem. Shalom, my friends. We will see you tomorrow. God bless.